Today I'm going to show you how I made this frame for this painting by the artist Andrew Aaronworth. Now Andy is a portrait painter and this painting is of my friend Mike and Judy's dog and that's what Andy does. He specializes in portrait painting and if you'd like to see more of his work I'll put a link in the description and I'll just write it out here on the screen. Now coincidentally at the same time, or right around the same time that Judy asked me to frame this painting, I was helping a friend trim his house out. We're using Windsor casing. And as I was helping my buddy out, I thought, wow, I think that Windsor casing would make a nice frame for that painting that Andy did. And so that's what we're gonna do today. We'll go downstairs into the wood shop and we'll make this frame from start to finish. I'm going to float the painting in the frame. So the first measurement I need is how big the painting is. And this is 12 inches by 12 inches and because I want a 3 8 inch reveal on each side I'm going to make the opening of the frame 12 and 3 quarters by 12 and 3 quarters. Then the next step is to decide what side of the molding I want to be the inside or the outside of the frame and in this case I decided I wanted the bead to be the outside of the frame. So what I'm going to do is first cut a miter from the heavy part of the molding will be my inside cut and I'll cut a miter on all four pieces of molding and then I'll mark out or I'll measure out 12 and 3 quarters of an inch, mark a line and that'll be my second cut and then I'll have four pieces of molding all with an inside measurement of 12 and 3 quarters. With the moldings now cut to length, I can assemble the frame and I'll use a little wood glue in the corners and inch long nails on the outer part of the frame and then I'm going to put a larger nail in the nail gun and nail through this, uh, I guess this inside part of the frame. I'll bring the camera closer when I do that. I'm going to squeeze the frame together so a little of the glue squeezes out and hold the miter right where I want it. Now I've just changed the nails in the nail gun to an inch and a half and I'm going to nail through this inside part of the corner. Okay well that's the last nail and you can see how the frame well, it looks like it's done, but it isn't. There's a few things that I still need to do, and one is I need to build out the back, so that will be uh, the structure that holds the painting in place. And I want the painting a little higher up the wall, so I'm going to build the back of the painting up by about three quarters of an inch. I'm using half inch plywood that I've cut to two inch strips to build out the back of the frame. And you'll also notice that I'm not using a miter joint. I'm using a straight cut and what that's going to do is help strengthen the miter joint that is already there because it overlaps into the next piece of molding. I'm adding a little wood glue for strength and you can see how the half inch piece of plywood overlaps into the second piece of molding and that will strengthen this miter joint. And then to attach the half inch plywood I'm using just an inch long nail. You want to make sure you don't use too long of a nail or you'll go right through the face of the frame. Okay, well that's the last nail for the back structure. Now I'm going to work on the outside, inside edge. So basically, I just want to beef up the back of the frame here. And to do that, I have some of the, some of the back band 
that we've been using on the job. So what a backband is, when you run the casing up and around the door, if you want a heavier side to the casing, you can backband it. And the reason why I like to do that is that way, when your baseboard dead ends into the backband and you run your shoe molding at the end of the job, then the shoe molding also dead ends into the backband. I'm attaching the piece of molding to the back of the frame by nailing through the front of the frame. It's a little bit easier though if you can first get a nail in the miter and then that will hold this end in place and then you can stand the frame up well that's it for now I am going to fill all the nail holes though before I call it a day and that's just so when I come in tomorrow I can give the frame a quick sanding and it will be ready for paint well I finished sanding the frame and I thought I should mention that I used spackle to fill my nail holes it's also known as joint compound. Now I'm priming the frame and I'm using Fresh Start by Benjamin Moore. It's an acrylic primer. Well, I've got two coats of the Fresh Start primer on the frame and I've sanded in between each coat with 220 sandpaper. Now I've brought the frame upstairs to my art studio so the final coats of finish can dry in a dust-free environment. The paint that I'm using is Satin and Purple by Benjamin Moore and the color is White Dove. And I also should mention that I thinned the painting, or not the painting, but the, the paint, <laughs> the paint out a little bit with Penetrol. And I like to do that because the paint just lays down a little bit nicer. Now that the frame is dry, I'm going to attach the painting to the frame and I like to put a piece of glossine on the painting so I don't damage the painting and then just a piece of cardboard for even pressure because you need a little downward pressure and then I will just attach the painting with a few screws from behind. Okay, well that's about it. And you know, I really like the way the painting looks in the frame. I'm just hoping that Judy likes the way it looks in the frame. She's a ceramic artist, so she's very particular. Now, if you'd like to see more how-to projects, please visit johnpeters.com and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in.